Hello and welcome. On the first part of this Extreme Lows of Physics series, I reached very low pressure with great difficulties and I was hoping to reach extreme low temperature with less struggle. <coughs> temperature is defined as the average molecular agitation and a complete stillness will theoretically define absolute zero, which is much like absolute vacuum, unreachable. Scientists can get closer and closer and amateur like myself can always try. And this is what I do on this video. For this, I'll need a reliable way to measure temperature. Many options are available, but I like to use the electrical resistance of platinum. It is chemically stable, durable, and cheaply available, which makes it an advantageous choice over more expensive options. These probes have a known resistance at 0 degrees Celsius of 100 ohm. A resistance versus temperature calibration curve can be established. But because platinum is not a superconductor, that line does not extend to zero but gives us nonetheless a good idea of cryogenic temperatures down to about 30 to 40 Kelvin. Below that, the resistance stabilize and other means of temperature measurement must be used. So let's look at different temperature scales. The Celsius scale defines zero as melting water ice and 100 as boiling water under normal atmospheric pressure. The Kelvin defines zero as absolute zero at minus 273.15 degrees Celsius but an increase of one degree Kelvin is equal to one degree Celsius. So water freezes at 273.15 Kelvin. The Fahrenheit scale invented in 1724 is based on an ammonium chloride solution and is used by less than 5% of the world's population. Even the UK have switched to the Celsius scale in the 1960s. Why we're still talking about it, I just don't know. Anyway, let's try to get as low as possible. As for the official coldest temperature on Earth... The coldest temperature ever recorded in Antarctica is minus 89.2 at Bostock Station in 1983. Under this climate, chlorine is 12 degrees away from being a solid and could be stored as a liquid under normal atmospheric pressure. At this temperature and with enough carbon dioxide in the air, snow would be made of dry ice. That's a very alien concept. Even colder, nitrogen condense at 196 degrees below zero and solidify at about 210 degrees below zero. And you can do it too by simply reducing the pressure over liquid nitrogen, as seen in many other YouTube videos such as the King of Random, Veritasium, Cody's Lab, and many others. I've done this experiment two years ago in the DIY liquid nitrogen video, but I couldn't show you the gas solidifying. And that can be done by creating a vacuum above the surface of the liquid. We're removing the warmer molecule, leaving behind the coldest one until effectively it freezes completely over. Uh, for nitrogen, this happened around 210 degrees below zero, and my thermometer cannot read it. So I can't show you the uh, actual ice. Let me set the record straight with this new vacuum chamber, and there we are. I also replaced the pressure gauge from the original with this one, a lot more accurate. And also measuring vacuum in tour make more sense to me. It's not obvious on the video here, but I am poking at solid nitrogen below the surface and the resistance is about 16 ohm. So going back to the calibration, a simple calculation using the curve gives a temperature of minus 212 degrees Celsius. Only one degree off, so not bad at all. Since I have some uh, liquid nitrogen handy, I also prepare a little bit of uh, liquid oxygen verify some of its magnetic property. Hey, what are you doing, man? Are you fucking serious? Put that out, motherfucker! Oh, God, you oh, stupid or what? In a previous video, I recorded in high speed some chemical drops, and since I'm messing with liquid nitrogen, here is some shots at 2,000 frames per second of the condensed liquid dripping in itself. And at 4,000 frames per second. I believe this is a first on YouTube. Now to get even lower, we need another gas, and below minus 210 degrees Celsius, the pickings are slim. We can drop an additional few degrees by solidifying liquid oxygen at 218 degrees below zero. Since I want to stay in good standing with my neighbors, and I'd like to sell my house in one piece, I went with neon. Discovered in 1898, neon is present in air at about 18 ppm, and boils at minus 246 degrees. So my first idea was to push compressed neon through a cooling copper coil immersed in liquid nitrogen before exiting through a nozzle into a door where I could monitor the drop in temperature. The advantage of this setup is the ability to control the pressure going through the coil. Unfortunately, I ran out of neon before I could condense any liquid. While contemplating my failure, I had another idea. But this involved new equipment 
I did not plan to spend money on. But just like everything else in home science, nothing come easy or cheap. And this is a prime example of my appreciation for your patience. Now I did not let you down before and I won't let you down this time. But you gotta give me some time to figure this out. So I hope to see you on the next video when I get this thing to work. So this is probably not your first YouTube video and you know what to do. Thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you want. Patreon, bell, share. I hope to see you again on the next one and thank you for watching. Damn it.